no. So, I don't do political blogs really, but I thought I'm, I have to do this one because um, I just have to. So, oh, it's raining. Um, so, this is a reaction blog to um, some questions that were raised on um, Jonathan M. S. Pierce's um, um, ATP Politics uh, YouTube site uh, that were raised concerning whether um, Ukrainian refugees uh, might be sent back to Ukraine, refugees who were of old enough to do to serve in the Ukrainian military, uh, whether they're deserters or um, conscientious objectors or um, just don't want to shoot people. Um, and so we had this discussion, okay, and um, it went sort of backwards and forth, back and forth. And uh, so um, it's, it's very complicated and he, Jonathan got into all these uh, sort of moral questions, which isn't, wasn't what I was actually trying to discuss. Okay, so what I was, so obviously my message didn't really um, come across very well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to refer to and sum up a document, a German document, an official German document, a press report published by the Bundesministerium des Inneren und für Heimat, which is basically um, like the Home Office. It's, an, it's a publication, it's a press report by the German Home Office. And it's dated from the 24th of the 11th, 2023. And it basically just sums up what I was trying to say, probably a bit better. Now, <clears throat> I read it yesterday and um, I tried to find it today and half of it was gone. So the first half is more or less accurate and the second half is from, from memory. But you, you can go and check it out. It's going to be out there on the, on the web somewhere. So the title is, and of course the question is whether, you know, Ukrainian uh, men um, who have sought asylum or refugee status in Europe or Germany, particularly Germany, which is where I live, are actually going to be sent back. And my answer to that question was, no way, Jose, um, uh, it ain't going to happen. So this is why. Um, so the title of this document is... Um, Schutzstatus der Geflüchtete aus der Ukraine wird bis März 2025 verlängert. So the status, Schutzstatus means that they are protected. So the status of protection of refugees from Ukraine will be guaranteed until, until the March 2025. And that's basically, um, it's being extended until March. It, well, it was extended until March 2025. Um, so th this, this is a decree, okay? So in German, that's Rechtsverordnung, which was issued um, by the Innenministerium, which is that, like the... Um, uh, home office that I just mentioned. So they have the they can just basically make these these deci decisions, and they decided that Ukrainian refugees who fled from the war in Ukraine have res a residency permit in Germany, which is valid until the fourth of March, twenty twenty five. Okay, and um, this was this was um, implemented by decree of the Innen of the Home Office, um, and it's been ratified by the German Parliament. Um, and somewhere, hang on. So this decision 
was made on the basis of a decision made by the EU member states at the end of September 2023. So, so German Home Office and German Parliament are basically following ideas that were propagated by the EU. The EU is basically just saying we would like our member countries to do these things, to do this, and, and Germany did it. So what does it mean? It means that Ukrainian refugees don't need to apply for resident, residency permits in Germany. Their rights are automatically extended, which um, basically means that all this um, discussion that we had on, on Jonathan's uh, podcast is, is uh, superfluous because um, Ukrainian refugees don't need to apply for refugee status. They don't need to apply for, to, uh, for political um, asylum. Okay. Now, just there, are, this this paper is quite interesting because it gives us some sort of, sort of statistics. Okay, so I'm going to start with I'm going to start with my bottle of gear. So the one. There are one, there's 1, one million, or are, there are 1, 1 million refugees from Ukraine at present living in Germany. Okay. Now, if I, so about a million of those are children, underage children, which leaves like a, a million, of which two thirds are women, one third, so that's 250,000 are men, of which 200,000 are of military, are, are old enough to serve in the Ukrainian military, or would be old enough, which means that they're basically uh, between 18 and 60 years old. Um, the other reason why I think that it's very unlikely that they, they these, you know, 200,000 men who could potentially serve in the Ukrainian army, Ukrainian army will be sent back to Ukraine is that Ukraine hasn't formally made a request to Germany to send them back. Okay, so that would be something called Staatshilfe. Um, so that there's this um, agreement between states that states can ask other states to help them to achieve certain aims. That's what would ha that's what would uh, this would be all about. But um, it hasn't actually happened yet. Um, what has happened, apparently, is that Ukraine has refused or will be refusing to allow Ukrainian, um, Ukrainian men of military age to renew their documents. So I'm, I suppose we're talking about passports. Um, and which is obviously, in a, that's, and, uh, <laughs> so that's applying pressure to them to sort of what what they will be doing is if you want so if you're a Ukrainian of military age you want you want to renew your passport you will have to go to Ukraine to do that which means that they've got you you know um, but you know I, I don't want to well I mean I did at some point say that this this question is clear cut or it's not it's not complicated morally it's very complicated okay what, what I meant uh, I probably should have said it's legally quite clear cut, you know, because it's morally, it's a, it's a moral minefield, which, you know, Jonathan M.S. Pierce, you know, he, he that's, that's his uh, speciality, I suppose. Um, now, this question, this moral question of whether Ukrainian men of fighting age should be sent back is actually being debated in Germany, you know, so it's not clear cut here. Um, it's definitely being debated, but the problem is there's a, dis a disjuncture between what gets debated and what is doable, okay, or feasible. And so I'm not going to get into the debate of, you know, should people get sent back and, you know, all this stuff. It, it, it's, it's, it's interesting, but that's not what my thoughts are concentrated on at the moment. Um, so one of the, one of the ways that some one German politician 
I think what was what was this called? He called Kiza, Kiza Bawa or Kiza Wetter. Now he suggested that um, uh, Ukrainian men of fighting age should be their their Bürgergeld, which is basically the German equivalent of what's it called, universal credit, should be that so that they should get less. Okay, that would be like. Uh, that's called Germans call the sanction to to basically pressurize them to go back, and I, I don't think that's got a chance in hell of getting through because you know it's just um, they've tried this in the past with people who are unemployed and German um, German judges just just threw it out of court. You know, so the next thing is um, so the German. Uh, uh, Rechts, what was he called? Minister, Minister für Recht, uh, Justizminister, the German Minister for Justice, um, has actually, this, this is also in this report that I'm, I'm quoting, he has said that, um, you see, he said that the idea of sending them back would be very difficult because German Germans have the right under the German constitution to not be forced to fight uh, with the use of arms. Okay, and so because these um, Ukrainian refugees have basically the same rights that uh, they have residency rights, they have essentially the same human rights under the German constitution that. Um, any German would have. So if you can't force a German to fight, well, you could if you change the law, but at present you can't force a German to fight in an army. Okay, which basically, which is what he's saying, is basically that it would be very difficult to get Ukrainian to do that. Okay. Um, another problem, well, no, it's not a problem because, you know, I don't think this is a problem, not sending... Uh, Ukrainians to, to, to die in Ukraine, but um, if they don't want to, you know. But th th another aspect or an, uh, another thing that's worth noting is that this um, decree doesn't actually have a provision for sending um, men of military age back to Ukraine. It's, it was suggested by the, by the EU that, that member countries, um, um, that member countries try to um, implement this recommendation. Germany did it, but it doesn't actually have provisions to send those men to back to Ukraine. So that's another reason why I say um, it's not going to happen. And I think any Ukrainian uh, refugees in Germany, I think they can sleep well until the 4th of March 2025, which is like for the next year or so, uh, in this respect, nothing much is going to happen. Okay. Um, so Jonathan M.S. Pierce mentioned a lot of stuff which was relevant to claiming asylum, refugee status and so forth. I just want to make the point here that a lot of that is very interesting and it's very correct and relevant in a sort of world perspective when it comes to uh, Ukrainian refugees in Germany it, it's not really relevant because um, Ukrainian refugees refugees in Germany are not obliged to claim asylum and as I just mentioned like previously not many of them actually do. Um, and there are reasons for this, you know, because if you claim uh, that the, the it, it's, it's more difficult to claim asylum than refugee status. That's why by far the majority of refugees claim refugee status under the Geneva Convention on Refugees and don't claim uh, asylum status under the 
German under German law because it's just more difficult to get. And, and um, Jonathan actually um, quoted all these hurdles, all these things that have to be like sort of looked into and stuff. But this is this is not relevant to to Ukrainians in Germany because they don't have to do that. And they, in fact, don't have to claim refugee status, okay? And I did actually say that in my comments, but it, it seems to have been looked like fallen, what's the term, fallen by the by or whatever. So, again, Ukrainian refugees can stay in Germany until the 4th of the 3rd, 2023, and there's very little chance that anybody is going to send them back to Ukraine to fight against the Russians, okay? Um... So, again, the discussion revolved around uh, asylum seekers. Now, um, only around four, between around 450, uh, 450 Ukrainians of, uh, uh, claimed asylum in Germany in uh, 2022, and the, the, it was a similar number in 2023, okay? So and that's around 2.5%, two, two which is the norm. If you look at other countries like Syria and Iraq, that's, that's, that's the norm. And that there are reasons why so few people claim asylum and most of them just want uh, refugee status. Refugee status is easier to get than a political asylum. Um, but as I said, they don't have to apply to it. So all, this is all anything to do with political asylum or refugee status. And, and, and uh, you know, it's all irrelevant. Okay. Um, because essentially, Ukrainians, as far as I, you know, as far as I interpret this document, essentially, uh, Ukrainian refugees are de facto refugees, which means that... Um, we know that they're refugees because we know that there is a war going on in, in Ukraine. We know that people are shooting at them. Um, but they're not de jure refugees because they don't have to claim um, refugee status under German law. And they don't, they're not given that status under German law because they're basically just treated like uh, normal citizens. Um, so again... Any more any any discussions concerning morals, um, whether you know um, Russia, uh, Ukrainians of military age should be sent back to fight against the Russians? So um, it's interesting, you know. I, I like listening to that kind of stuff, but it's all sort of pie in the sky, okay? Because um, it ain't going to happen, okay? At least not not until the twenty fourth to the fourth of the third, twenty twenty five. Now this deadline. So it's in about a year's time. This deadline, um, it's probably going to be extended, and that's probably just going to, that's not going to be very difficult to, to get through because um, refugees who claim asylum under the the Geneva Convention, um, they 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 all, they also have their so called Aufenthaltserlaubnis, uh, they they which is their refugee status. It, it's limited to three two or three years or something, and if the war still going on in the country where they came from after that period it's just like formality to get it extended okay um so it's difficult you know to, to envisage a scenario where 200,000 ukrainians are, are being flown back to ukraine to fight against the russians you know that's like a thousand flights um into a country where there's was that where there's actually no airport that actually uh, would accept where planes could land would be allowed to land, um, and the other thing is Germans don't have the stomach stomach for that. There would be huge protests, you know. Even uh, I'm not sure. I don't. I can't. I don't. Can't think of any political party in Germany that would actually like that to happen. Um, Particularly after Germany's, you know, given so much money to uh, or help to Ukraine, and, and stands in fairly good light. Now, if they start sending uh, Ukraine Ukrainian refugees back um, in handcuffs, that that's not good sort of uh, you know publicity for Germany. Um, so. 
So the other thing is, just let's let's assume that Jonathan is correct, and this this what I just mentioned didn't exist. Okay, so just imagine if ref if Ukrainian uh, de facto refugees did have to claim um, asylum or, or refugee status in Germany. Now what happens, which is the case if you're, like, if you're from Iraq or Syria or Afghanistan, now what generally happens um, is that if your refugee status is rejected, but so you're basically obliged to go back to your country of origin. But if um, there's still a war going on in that country, it's, it normally doesn't, you normally don't get flown back to that country, okay? Because there's something called Sichere uh, Ursprungsländer, okay? So Germany has a list of countries that are not, where your, your life isn't like immediately in danger uh, if you go there. And there are other countries where your life is quite sort of in danger because people are shooting around at each other all the time and you could get caught in the crossfire and stuff. So, yeah, so so even if Ukrainians did have to claim re refugee status in Germany, which they don't, and go, all this, go through all these kind of procedures of having their case tested and, and tried and stuff, even if they were rejected, they wouldn't get sent back until the war's over. So it's, it, again, this is just pie in the sky, okay? Um, and the other thing is, the way uh, this works in Germany is that there's something called um, Sicherheitsverwahrung. So if your asylum uh, um, application gets turned down, what happens is that up in, in other countries, what happens is that the police just comes and arrests you and they put you in a prison until they've got a flight for you to take you back to the country, whichever country you came from. Now, Germany doesn't do this as a rule. There, there, there's something similar, but normally a judge has to decide, or there, has, there are strict criteria um, which have to be followed before somebody is, arrest, is, is actually put into a prison cell awaiting their flight back to their country of origin, or, you know, an asylum seeker before they get imprisoned, awaiting extradition. Um, and what has often happened in the past is that, you know, you get turned down and because the authorities don't really think that there's any chance of you like fleeing, because a lot of these people, they live in accommodation that is paid for by the state, okay? so. What happens is you, they tell you, well, you're going to be, we're going to pick you up within the next month or so, okay? So I know cases of people who were like, they were told they were going to get picked up in the next month or so and taken back to Belgium. And they knocked on my door and I said, what, what are you doing here? You know, you should be in your accommodation. And they said, well, they, the police is going to come within the next sort of, four weeks or so and pick me up uh, and I don't want to go to uh, I don't don't want to go to um, Bulgaria because when I went through Bulgaria when I walked through Bulgaria on my way to Germany I was picked up by the police they beat me up they took away my telephone my um, portable they never gave it back to me they kept my money and they threw me in jail for three weeks and after three weeks they let me out again they beat me up again and said I should go to Germany. So now, so what I did here was I took this this individual to um, a German monastery, and I talked to a friend of mine who was uh, a monk. And this person, this individual, got um, church asylum. Okay, so as long as he stayed in the abbey working with the monks and praying with them and helping them and just being sort of useful. As long as he did that, the German police couldn't arrest him. If, he, if he'd set one foot outside of the monastery, you know, they, would, they could have taken him and 
you know, sent him to Bulgaria. Now, I'm, I'm very glad I did this because he, he had to stay there six months. And after six months, the German authorities have to, basically, he can stay in Germany. And he did. This, this is what actually happened. Now, um, yeah, so, so that, that's the way it works. And um, what happened two weeks after I'd taken him there is that there was a decision made by, the, um, by a German judge. Um, and he said that they, they decided that it was no longer possible or the German authorities should no longer send uh, refugees back to Bulgaria um, because of the Dublin Accord. You know what the Dublin Accord is? I don't want to get into that here, but um, that's, well, you know, it's, that's the reason they wanted to send him to Bulgaria because he had actually signed a bit of paper, was forced by the police or whoever, I don't know, to sign um, a document saying, claiming asylum in Bulgaria. And this judge said that this was like not going to happen anymore. So, you know, I helped him to evade some, um, a fate that two weeks later a judge said it's not going it shouldn't be happening. You know, he, he, he needs to stay in Germany. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Thunder stopped. That's nice. I'm just going to finish my nice German beer. And uh, yeah, I, hope, I hope that that sort of cleared up some issues and sort of, uh, clarified my position on all, all this, you know, because uh, I want, you, I mean, I, I do want Ukraine to win this war and I want the Russians to get, the, get out of Ukraine. Um, but what I also like is like, I don't like disinformation. Okay, so I just like to clarify things. There are laws, there are moral issues, which are very interesting, and I also like to get involved in moral issues and discuss them. But there are also laws. And sometimes the laws are so sort of, um, uh, the laws are so uh, are fairly clear cut. And the, I mean, laws are quite difficult to change. So at present, just to sort of sum it up, refugee, Ukrainian refugees of military fighting age, don't worry, for the next year or so, no one's going to going to send you, send you back to Ukraine, okay? And I just think that people fighting against the Russians should be ones, should be people who really have the stomach for it and not people who are like just given, they, we, the Ukrainian army that shouldn't be operating on Russian according to Russian tactics and principles, you know. And I'm also somebody who believes that if that the, the Ukrainians shouldn't be allowed to carry the burden of this war on their own shoulders. I think that at some point, um, I don't know if it's going to be France, but at some point there has to be some kind of intervention by the West. I think that's almost inevitable. Okay, so I don't want to end this oh, you know, this German guy and he wants, he doesn't want Ukraine to fight and stuff. That That's not at all the case, okay? But laws are there to be respected and sometimes these laws are good, sometimes they're bad, but I just think these laws that I just sort of mentioned are good, okay? Let me know what you think in your comments down below and see you soon.